Hey, Whitstock. Yeah. This has been in the making for actually quite some time. It feels like almost six, six months. months ago. You said, hey, I want to do something different in the yeah. back and do Sandbox Studio. And I'm pretty sure I had a kind of a confused look on my face. It looks something like this. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> but now it's kind of together. You're liking the way it's looking. I think it still has not it's at its fullest potential. What's amazing is no matter how much time we have, it always comes down to the last Right? Day. Same way with the home <laughs> show and everything else. I see you got a piece of paper in front of you. I was up to like midnight last night just kind of sketching some stuff. You didn't really give me a layout on where this man cave was. So let's not door. let's not start pointing so, fingers, okay? Yes, right? <laughs> You've had about two months to work on this. I'm gonna just And so let's right instantly now. start blaming it on hey, you didn't give me <laughs> and here comes the Armada. I love it. We got the Atlantis crew all the way from New Jersey, followed by the Aquascape support team. I love it. <laughs> Jack's riding on the top. This is going to be fun. was the night before Christmas, or I mean, before the artists of the year show up. <laughs> it's kind of the calm before the storm. Yeah. Greg and I are sitting here just kind of chilling, waiting for Atlantis Water Gardens and the rest, of the rest of their team to show up. Watching the Bears, the Bears, hopefully beat the Packers. <laughs> We've got plenty of booze, something with pomegranate martinis, fridge full of beer, food cooking over there. So they're gonna get here, we'll get their genuine first impressions of what they think of it. And Jack has not even thought of really of a design and what he wants to do, so he'll probably put that together tonight. You guys should see that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's kind of late, it's Sunday, and we're just excited to see those guys come. Hey, Whitstock. Yeah. This has been in the making for actually quite some time. It feels like almost six, six months. months ago. Right. You said, hey, I want to do something different in yeah. the back and do a sandbox studio. And I'm pretty sure I had a kind of a confused look on my face. It looks something like this. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> but now it's kind of together. You're liking the way it's looking. I think it still has not It's at its fullest potential. What's amazing is no matter how much time we have, it always comes down to the last Right. Day. Same way with the home <laughs> show and everything else. So I think tomorrow morning, they're finishing up putting on some of the electrical outlets and getting the fabric up so that we don't see the truck bays, but it all come together at the end, which is, I guess, the only thing that matters. What is the one thing you're most excited about seeing out of all of these past artists of the year? Like, what are you hoping to achieve? Here's what I think. I think that something's Ooh, gonna come out Wait, of this wait, like, wait, he just leaned forward, so pay attention now. <laughs> just like when we filmed the TV show, I think we're gonna come up with some new ideas and new products and new designs, so that's what I'm super excited about. So I'm planning on being alongside these guys as they go through the creative process. Oh, that's awesome. Obviously for myself and the rest of Team Aquascape, it's training, training, training. It's the collaboration and rubbing elbows with you know some of the most talented people in the world inside our Amen. own home over here. Amen. And so we're gonna obviously come up with some really, really cool displays. Tearing them down would normally feel horrible at the end of every single week, but the that's, excitement- That's kind of the exciting part. It is, right? Yeah. Like the excitement of a new artist coming in week after week after week will at least lessen the blow a little bit the whole teardown part. Thank you guys so much for following us on this journey and uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of it because you're going to see some really cool stuff. I promise. <laughs> Joanne, come in here. Let the boys get all the stuff. Oh, I'm not getting it. That's right. Hello. Hello. Hey. Welcome, welcome. What's up, man? What's up, Colby? Hey. hey. How's it going? Finally, finally, what's up, Drew? Hello, Stan. Thank you. The alcohol store was closed. It's not a problem for me. Okay, I have been slaving in this kitchen for hours. I'm starving too. So let's see, look at what I made. Chicken parm, lasagna, cheese lasagna. This was very hard for me to go to Caputo's and pick up. <laughs> You guys excited for this week? Yeah. Awesome. This is how you can tell it's been a long trip and they're starving. When there's 200 seats to choose from, yet they all stand and eat. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Four feet here. Four feet here and at that pole, that tree it's two pole? feet. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you 
Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's really not sand. I mean, it's actually pretty hard to do. Like, I'm not, if I'm jumping on it like that and not getting through, we have best of Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I saw this video, and now seeing it in person, it just gives a totally different vantage point. I can, for myself, I could picture an office out there. I could picture like that be my office, and then I'd want to see a water feature, and then be able to go to the roof gardens and stepping over like streams, maybe like a deep stream, something where there's a pond lapping up against this deck, even where it's cantilevered over, and there's stepping stones going through. But I see fish like swimming all the way over to that area. Maybe even something like a fountainscape over in here, and use that elevation to kind of go up a couple steps through the garden, come back down, and maybe another sort of bridge over there. I definitely see a waterfall back in that corner. Maybe something like three or four feet high so you can see it from inside where the office is. That'll be nice because that'll help lock the doors. And then we don't have to put fabric up all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well you've got a bunch of big trees yeah. and stuff that you use. And then just picturing this as a home where you walk out the back door and it's something you want to live with every day. Like we can go over the top and something really ostentatious. I don't think it's going to fit here. I want to have something where somebody can actually picture this in their backyard. An expensive project yeah. would still be a really like a feasible well, project. It's, it's actually not like it, it's a pretty <laughs> typical backyard. Like 40 feet by 30 feet from there to there. Yeah. Most people have that. Price, yeah. This is very difficult. Yeah. Like New Jersey and here in Chicago as well. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, stand still. Like, hey, remember the old fashioned duels? Go 15 feet apart and you gotta stand there. Okay, yeah, that's good. 10 paces each and then turn and shoot. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> Hey Jack, you made it. Hey. What are we doing here? I don't know. What do you I see you got a piece of paper in front of you? I was up to like midnight last night just kind of sketching some stuff. You didn't really give me a layout on where this man cave was. Let's not floor. let's not start pointing yeah. fingers, okay? Yes, right. You've had about two months to work on this. I'm gonna disappear. And so let's right instantly now. start blaming it on hey, you didn't give me <laughs> well, that's how it goes. But if that's, I mean, why would it be any different uh, on a normal job site? Well, here's what we got, bro. All right, let me come around from the other side. How about this shed? I mean, you can't really call it a shed. This whole layout is blowing my mind. I was talking about it last night, just doing my intro stuff, and this is a water feature artist studio. This isn't a sandbox. No, like, this is a studio. Yeah. In fact, if I hear sandbox one more time, yeah, I really, might get upset. It, it doesn't know justice. <laughs> this is amazing. The, the work you guys have done to this point to create a palette is gonna be really fun to really put some- What are you hoping here. to get out of this? You know, bring in your whole team down here. I mean, you shut down your business back home. Yeah, so it's winter time, and we, we're done working. Yeah. Training is the best thing we can do during the winter. So coming out here, having these guys get exposed to you guys, mm -hmm. the way you're doing things, I, I always like to look at what other people do and how they place rocks and how they're thinking as far as what the layout's gonna be on a backyard. So for me, I wanna just take away knowledge. And I want my guys to really absorb as much as they can in this week. So we're here for five days building this thing. <laughs> so it's gonna be a real crash course in awesome water feature building. Greg uh, was talking to us earlier this morning and what happens when we do collaborations like this with some of the best in the world really often without even thinking about a new products and stuff even get developed yeah like we're not going to just come up with a cool project someplace along the line we're going to say ah what if we had something like this actually developed and so i guarantee between you being here this week and the last artist of the year being here the last first week of march there'll probably be some new products that homeowners can I mean, actually use how could it not be yeah right like the best minds in the world are coming together to build unbelievable products Projects. And I think what I like so much about the studio, not the sandbox, the studio, is that it's a realistic space. There's 40 feet from the edge over here to the spot over here, and we've got about 30 some feet from the deck to the patio over here. This is actually about the size of my backyard. Is it? In New Jersey. And this is what a lot of backyards look like that are in typical suburban neighborhoods. I mean, you don't have usually these large plots of land. It's going to be confined to like, you know, a 40 by 50 or so space where then you have to develop into something and especially now like the world that we're living in I'm 
like seeing people just wanting to develop a staycation. And I know that's like a cliche buzzword. Yeah. Thing. They're not going anywhere and they're stuck at home and they're like, I'm looking out in the backyard and I want to be inspired. Yeah. I'm wake up, walk out with my cup of coffee and really be immersed in. Well, you said it yesterday. I mean, even from just sitting inside here, how could you not picture this your office? And that's right? Exactly what I said. Like, this is, I dreamed of having something like this. I could see working out in a standalone structure like this where it's got views of water features and I could just sit there and get my work done and have that serenity around me. And that's kind of where my mind is going with this. And of course you would need a refrigerator. Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't open it. And a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see what you sketched up at midnight, even without having the exact location right. of the, I just of the kind shed. Of estimated some stuff. What I really want to accomplish, I think, Brian, is we could go over the top. We could build this Disney World back here that's completely unattainable for most people. I want something where if somebody's watching this video, like, yeah, I could definitely see that in my backyard, or at least parts of it. I do want to incorporate some fountainscape stuff. I want to have a cool waterfall. Like I said, if this was an office, I'd want to look out here and see a, a nice waterfall. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be, you know, over the top grandiose, but I'm thinking like three, four feet high. That's pretty big. Days. For a flat backyard? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really would like to see is like a deep stream. I love big boulders and a narrower body of water because it gives it a lot of substance. Yep. So I could see like an 18 inch deep stream going through this backyard, meandering, and then ending up at a pond, maybe like 15 by 15, not a huge pond, and tuck it underneath that deck so you get the cantilever working and really just bring all these. Pause. That's what I want to get is a lot of interactive areas, like yep. up over the water, we're crossing over with bridges, we're bringing the turf right against the edge of the boulder. So for me, I want it to where somebody can look at this, but yeah, I can totally see that. Right so from inside here, the drawing, you know, does it justice. It's hard to pick this up, but so this corner would be sitting yeah. from in here. This is going to sit about like this. Exactly. This column here is that column right there. One we've got half covered with a giant tree, big waterfalls from this corner over here. The biggest thing we'll obviously have to pay attention to is we're designing again from inside the house, which is this space here, and that pole somewhat obstructs some things. So I guarantee as we're setting some rocks, we'll be back and forth inside here, making sure that pole doesn't block any lines of sight. And actually one of the things you and I talked about last night, this pole here, Yeah. I think we're gonna take it out. We're gonna bring the stream area, cut it into the patio, oh, and then set be cool. that inside the water. So we just we get a little more space there was thinking about maybe having a crossing here and a crossing there. I think we're gonna just keep it to one crossing over there. I like there. that, uh-huh. I wanna use some of the fountainscape pieces like the stack slate walls, portions of the stack slate urns, some of the fire stuff, and incorporate it into something cool surrounding that fake tree. That's gonna give us a vantage point from the house too. If we wrap it around, we're gonna get more visual there because honestly, that tree does block a bit when you're looking out from the house. So some of the waterfall might get lost. So giving another water feature around there is gonna help draw that into that space as well, really tying. Yeah, down. this area here with some of the fountainscapes then gives us views from inside the house over there. Yeah, when well, last night I was just kind of throwing some ideas around. This is not set in stone, so we can kind of ne play It never is. No. That's the fun part of our job. But I want to take some of those curved stack slate walls and kind of cut some boulders into them. Yeah. Maybe take some sections to earn and cut it to the top. I've got a similar fountainscape to this in my own backyard, and we did a lot of cutting of pieces into other pieces. I want to do a lot of that melding together where then it all becomes one large feature. And just really clean, like ribbon waterfalls, and then you have that curtain of water coming off of the stack slate wall. Small pooling area around it, just enough for it to fall into. I'm thinking like four or five inches of water in there, and then it can drop off to 18. So I can see the fish swimming from all the way over here at the deck, up this stream, under the bridge, this whole area here. It's basically a large pond. Yeah. It's just all gonna be deep stream. So I think it's more of like a It's more of like a big stream system, just a deep stream system system yeah, with some so pooling areas in there. Imagine kids walking around this and like trying to see where the fish are because this is the big portion of the pond but they could be anywhere in here. So we should probably prep some areas for some fish to get in here later. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, what we're gonna do, so we're inside Brian, you guys have that awesome fish area. Yep. We're gonna have to fill up some tanks with water and let it get acclimated for the next four or five days. Yep. I'm sure the water coming out of your hose is pretty cold. <laughs> pretty 
cold. Seeing that it's 10 degrees outside right now. We want to make sure that they're happy going in here, and then when we put them in, they're swimming around and, and they're okay with the temperature swing. Good. Well, I think the next step, I want to introduce everybody on your team, yep. our team, and then we should probably get some marking paint and dig. Now, one of the challenges we have, and I kind of like this, like no backyard is perfect right. as far as site access and stuff, and this backyard is kind of the same, right? We've got an area we can get in over here if we had a ramp, which we don't have right now, right? <laughs> we've got that area. So we've got to build this waterfall. We've got a long stream. And then the only other way in and out is that fence area over there, which has removable panels. Right now, we've got to try to kind of figure out what's our game plan as far as excavation and staging things. And we have a lot of guys here too. Yeah. <laughs> we've got your whole team. We've got my team. I can see two excavators working here uh, and then trying to feed is going to be a challenge. Yep. But I think we'll get it done. All right. Let's go say hi to your crew and, uh, and uh, we'll get Get started from there. Oh, look at them. So this is most of our team. We're missing a couple guys at home, but we got Wally, Drew, my son Anthony, we got Brennan, my other son Colby, and we got my wife Joanne. The brains behind the operation. She runs this place. Yeah, right? <laughs> but these guys all work in construction and a little bit of maintenance too. So this is gonna be a real awesome experience for them. This is an advanced project. Like we've done advanced projects at home, but getting to work with Brian and with Chris and all the guys on their team, you guys are gonna be able to take a lot of what they do, their fundamental, understanding rock placement, understanding design, bring it home and incorporate it close. And hopefully the digging's a little easier, but I don't know. So yeah, right there. Now, now where the machine's been running back and forth through here, though. <laughs> well, at home, our dirt is full of rocks and bad soils. So this is going to be a treat. I think. What I was telling our guys, too, is I want you guys to challenge yourselves. Remember, this is for training. So if some of you guys aren't that comfortable in the machine, a sandbox is a great place to practice. Please don't hit that main water line. Because, <laughs> I mean, it would be a great memory and a fantastic story. Yeah. But really slow things down, right? So we'll be careful with that. If you guys want to jump in a machine, if you've got, got questions like on our I don't know if you guys use dingoes or oh, we had something, something similar. similar. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are comfortable with that. I know for you, Colby, even running like a wheelbarrow might be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, let's get started. We'll get some paint and get this thing marked yeah, out. Let's do All it. right. Yeah. Oh, smell of paint in the morning. Take those like small urn sections yep. and have it just like kind of cascading into one another and just like a shallow pool that goes here. It'd be nice to have this as a peninsula right here. Yeah, I love it. So and when you're water on both sides. And this can come into three inches of water over That's here before it comes into that. Like a little tributary feeding. Exactly. And keep it tight to what we're doing here though. Here comes the Armada. I love it. Putting Jack's vision to work here. We got the Atlantis crew all the way from New Jersey, followed by the Aquascape support team. I love it. <laughs> Jack's riding on the top. OSHA approved. Well, at least if he falls, he falls in the sandbox studio. This is going to be fun. So keep checking back all day long on my Instagram stories to see what this actually becomes. I love my job. 